Well, good morning again. Uh, we just got Riley dropped off at school and now we're going to tow a car. I guess we got a Jeep Cherokee that the, sounds like electronic locks and all that decided to lock the lady out and not let her into her own car. So her key fob, nothing's working. So it's locked up sitting in her driveway and she can't even get into it. So we're gonna go pick it up, tow it over to the Jeep dealership and they're gonna reprogram new keys or something. But we'll figure out exactly what's going on when we get there. Never been in this neighborhood. It's kind of nice if you're like a neighborhood type of person. Okay, we got this one loaded up and out of there. It was in the garage. Uh, they weren't locked out of it. It has a physical key you could open up and unlock the door. But uh, every time you did, the alarm kept trying to go off because it's not recognizing that the, the fob is there with it. So this is a case where a wheel lift truck is way better and easier than a flatbed. It's in a low garage where it didn't have much clearance overhead. Uh, yeah, I could have got the door open, done all the neutral release stuff to try to get it in neutral, pop the center console out, all that, and then pull it out with the rollback into a driveway and then up onto the rollback bed. Uh, but with this truck, I was able to just bring the dollies into the garage, back under, grab it with the wheel lift, dolly the front, car lifts up six inches off the ground, still clears the garage by that much, pull it right out, lift it up to tow height and down the road we go. I never actually opened the door, never set off the alarm, never even physically touched the vehicle. And we're loaded up and going down the road. So situations like this are another reason why I very much prefer the wheel lift and dolly trucks to rollbacks. It's just they're a lot more convenient in a lot of situations. So we're gonna get this over to the Dodge dealer and uh, get it dropped off. All right, we got it dropped off here in a space. Uh, we're in the space, barely, but we're there. So now we're gonna run the keys back up front and now it looks like we gotta go back down to Lapine for an accident call. So I really wanted to go home after this and finish putting the radiator in the Cherokee so that's all good to go, but stupid work keeps getting in the way. All right, all done here at the dealership. And then now we're heading down to Lapine. I guess it's it's not a car accident, it's a tree fell on a car. Uh, we had big wind storms um, the last couple nights and this car was parked in the wrong spot, so we're Take gonna head down there. Take the next toward Northeast Highway 28, Greenwood Avenue, then turn right onto Northeast Highway 20. We're gonna do all that, and that will take us to the car that has a tree on it. Supposedly the tree's been cut off of the car already, so we just gotta hook onto it and take it to, I think it's going to a body shop, so it must not be that bad. Okay, we're about five miles away or so now, and of course, I'm starting to rain. Because that's how my luck goes. Okay, we got it hooked up here. Uh, some people aren't too keen on filming in their uh, yard and driveway. That's the case with both people today, which is totally understandable. But when I heard tree fell on it and crushed it, this isn't quite what I was expecting. I was expecting just a little more than that. So easy one. Just a little dent, a little dent. And this is the worst of it right here on that fender. But that makes it an easy one. It's a uh, front wheel drive car. Uh, so just grab it from the front, let the back end roll, throw some lights on the top and go. And then I used to use these uh, endless loops for my safety chains to hook to the car. And I've switched to these flat straps. And you can get these at Harbor Freight for like 10 bucks. And they just wrap right around anything. They're a lot better than this endless loop because you can slide these through a thinner spot much easier. And they've got this protective sleeve on them and the hook grabs right onto there, and then uh, no metal parts touching the customer's car. These work great, but like I said, they, they're sometimes a little thick to try to slide through somewhere. Those are a lot easier. Yeah, like 10 bucks at Harbor Freight, or you can go on Amazon like me to get the, the red ones because all your stuff is red, and then buy a black truck, so. And then also on this truck, I have been crossing the chains. I did not cross them on my other truck, and people always asked why. I said I'd explain it one day, and I didn't. The difference between this wheel of setup and a trailer is on a trailer when you cross your chains, the pivot point is right in between. It's, it's the ball hitch, the chains mount up there, hooked to the trailer right here. The pivot point of the trailer is usually right over that cross. So as you turn back and forth, nothing happens as far as lengthen and shorten the chains. That's one reason to cross it. The other is to catch the uh, tongue of the trailer if it falls off. Well, there's no tongue of the trailer here. And if this falls off, uh, the chains are kind of pointless at that point. So on this setup, the pivot point is not here over the cross of the chain. It is way back there. And that distance changes depending on what you're hauling. So on my other truck where the chain points were way out here wide, the chains were going in towards the center to get to the car. 
So then when you're pivoting, the point where they attach to the car is close together and just moving like that. It's not moving that far. If I cross them and went from way over here on the outside to all the way over there, now when I pivot, it pulls that chain a long way away. That's why I did not cross them on my other truck. Now on this truck, with the chain pockets being so close together like they would be on a normal hitch setup, when this swings back, it's really not pulling that far and it's moving that way at the same time. So it's, it's not that big a deal as far as chain slack. But no matter what, this is not a trailer and it does not act like a trailer. Crossing them or not crossing them, the chain will pull when you turn. So you do really have to watch that. And that's the reason I normally put my safety chains on after I pull out of somewhere. And if I got a jackknife or turn sharp places to get back into somewhere, I take them off first. It's not a trailer. It doesn't act like one. It's a Ford freaking Ranger. Also, the other thing I switched to with this truck, since I sold my old light bar with my old truck, is these individual lights instead of one single light bar. These are way more expensive, but they give you more options. Because on things like Jeep Wranglers, for example, they're fiberglass top. They have a spare tire on the back. There's nowhere to mount a magnetic light on the top of a Jeep. So what do you do? Turn them around and tell them from the back, mount the light to the hood. With these, you can just take them and put them right on the side of that Jeep where the body is metal and they stick. And now you have a light on each side. Works great on Jeeps, cars that have aluminum roofs and stuff like that and a whole bunch of different stuff. Much more versatile, much easier to use. Okay, back to town we go. Okay, we just got that car unloaded over at the body shop and uh, we're right across the street from my buddy Nate's shop and next thing we got to do is we got a meeting with Austin with some, uh, some legal people to talk about some legal things because you have not seen the last of the red tow truck. Uh, I have, Austin has, it's gone, but you guys have not. There's one more red tow truck video that we filmed, it's edited, it's ready to post just legally. I can't post it yet. Uh, there's a couple things we have to get straightened out and Get some okay on first and then you will see one more red tow truck video so keep an eye out for that but that meeting's not for about another hour or so so until then i'm going to come over here and uh bug my buddy nate and see how much i can slow him down for the day Ooh, gated entrance Ooh, we in the fancy neighborhood now got the pond and the geese but those lawyer types tend to make a little more money than the rest of us Although, if your job is to keep people like me and Austin from getting ourselves into legal trouble, we kind of deserve a little bit more money than the average person. There's a deer in the yard. And not a fake one either. So there's a couple more right here too. Alright, that's all done. Now they kicked us out of the fancy neighborhood, so that's Austin there. I'm following him out and uh, we're going to go find something else to do. And we're not in trouble just yet. We're still okay. So uh, hopefully another couple weeks and uh, we can post the grand finale of the red tow truck video. It's a good one. You're going to see the car flying off the back of the tow truck and going and smashing into the... You know what? You're just going to have to wait and see the video once the lawyer man says it's okay. But uh, grand finale. All right, we are finally done with all of our chores in town. Back home to finish putting the new radiator in the Jeep. So we've got new fan clutch, new radiator going in, new headlights on. It is super windy out here today. Oh, we got the trailer hooked up because something finally showed up. New tires are here. These are a hand cooked tire. They're an ice and snow rated tire. They go all siping and then there's a 19.5 weld wheels in here, which I won't show you right now they're in the boxes hopefully you'll see those tomorrow when we go put them on back to the Jeep uh, what do we do first I think first step is plasma cutter and yes it takes a plasma cutter to change a radiator in a Jeep fact so 15 seconds with a plasma cutter and we're done these pegs here on the bottom of the radiator here and here are slightly different than the ones on the new radiator here and here so what I did is I just took that slot right there and just opened it up off to the side a little bit the way that one was missing. Problem solved. Okay, new radiator's in. Uh, got it all much back up, fan comes back on, skid plates back on, two headlights work, 
Uh, got no leaks on anything, so we're gonna let it run for a bit, get up to operating temperature, make sure the coolant level's good, and the uh, thermostat opens, closes, all that. And uh, on to the next thing. Well, I was gonna go try to find another project to do, but I couldn't help pulling these two out together to take a couple photos for Instagram. Uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, go do that. It's just my name, Casey Liddell, on Instagram. And usually you see all the stuff I'm doing before it ever gets to YouTube because you know the whole video and making them and all that stuff where click, click, post is just way easier, so. Uh, next thing that's up to do, this one's ready to go other than just cleaning up the interior. It's all dusty from the dunes. This one, I just gotta throw the top on it. And I still got to um, weld that receiver hitch onto the back here so I can put the rear winch on it run the leads back. Other than that, I think this one's about ready to go. This one's good. Which means our next project is that truck. The 19.5 tires and wheels for my black truck finally showed up so I can put those tires and wheels on it. Which means I can put the 37s on this truck. So we can strip the bed off, uh, start working on the boom build for that, and then we will have this truck on 37s with a custom recovery bed on the back. This Jeep on tracks. That Jeep that's just way too cool, maybe it'll get the tracks too. I don't know. We'll figure that out as we go. But, but for now, uh, I think we're going to call that a day for this video. A little different than the normal ones, kind of just like a almost, I don't know, day in the life or I guess it's what they call vlogging. So if you like this style of video, it's kind of like the different things I'm working on throughout the day instead of just a one job thing or one tow truck thing. Comment down below and let me know, or comment down below and let me know. No, we don't want to see you. We want to see the Jeep. We want to see the tow truck. Your stupid stuff you do, forget about it. So let me know what you think down below. I don't know if you can hear that, but a whole lot of gunfire. Anyway. Uh, a lot more gunfire. Anyway, that's it for this video. We'll see you guys next time. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.